we're here again tonight because God desires each one of you to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Will no longer be deceived by the deceitfulness of sin. The Bible says sin is deceitful. It's deceiving you. There's pleasure in sin for a season. There's pleasure in sin in doing what you want to do, rejecting God. There's pleasure in that, but it only lasts for a season. Sin grows. And right now, there are people here who have got to the end of sin, where their body is being destroyed, and they're having the full effects of sin. Because they've gone in sin longer than most of you have here, the young people here. You're playing with sin. You're playing with witchcraft. You're watching Harry Potter movies. You're playing with drugs. You may be playing with drinking. You're starting out in sin. And you're full of pride. And you say, I don't need God. I don't need Him. Let's show up. And you think because you're young that you have a long life ahead of you. But you don't know today your life could be required of you. There are people that are going to die. The truth is there's people that are going to die in Dublin, Ireland today. Today there's people dying, yes. Does anyone disagree with me? Does anyone disagree with me? Do you think there's people dying in Ireland today? Do you think there's people that are in hospitals? that are dying today in Ireland? Oh, but you don't care about that. You don't care about that because you're full of yourself and you're living for yourself. You don't care about people dying. But the Lord Jesus Christ changed me. I didn't care either. Most of my life, I didn't care. I just cared about myself. Oh, and I had friends. I had friends that thought the same way as me. I had friends that were going the same way as me. I have friends that were just like you. You're following your friends. You follow your friends. You're like sheep. You're all like sheep. The Bible says all of us are like sheep. You know what I said? All of us have gone astray like sheep. The Lord has caused the iniquity of all of us to fall upon Him. Jesus Christ lived the perfect life that you might become his sheep. Jesus Christ went to that cross and shed his precious blood and rose from the dead that you might become his sheep, that he might become your shepherd, that he might be the shepherd and overseer of your soul. Jesus Christ cares about your soul. He cares about you. You're not even caring about yourself. He sends those who are his sheep to come and preach the gospel, the good news, to you who are lost. You're lost. You're like sheep without a shepherd. And that means you're prey. A sheep without a shepherd is prey to the wolf. And Satan is like a prowling lion seeking whom he may devour. Oh, and he's like... He's like a, a, a sheep in a wolf's clothing. You know, wolf in sheep clothing. He appears to you as an angel of light. Satan will come to you and tell you the things you want to hear. He'll say, eat, drink, and party. Do whatever you want to do. That's the lie of the devil in the garden. That's the lie that he told Eve. He said, you shall become as God. Do whatever you will. Do whatever you want to do. Be as God. You are God, you're your own God. That's idolatry. When you're in control of your life, and you are on the throne of your life, that's idolatry. You're idolizing yourself. When you're taking control of your own life, you're idolizing yourself. I know, because I do that. I need to only idolize myself. I idolize people, too. Yeah, a lot of you might idolize Bono. Right? He's from Ireland, he's from Dublin. You might idolize Bono. Yes? You highly esteem the things of this world. You exalt man of this God. Oh, but there should be no other gods before him or besides him. Yes, that's right, there's many false gospels out there. 
And Bono is teaching a first gospel. He's teaching a first gospel. Hey! How you doing, Joe? Yeah, well, well talk, to, talk to the brothers here. Talk to the brothers here. Amen. The Lord, He wants you to humble yourself and become like a little child. Stop being prideful. Don't think you're strong. I know in Ireland, I know in Ireland most of you are mighty and drinking. You're mighty and drinking. You're strong and drinking. You're mighty drunkards. Amen. Mighty drunkards. Yes, you're prideful. You're bold in it. You're ashamed. We should be ashamed of all of this. We should be ashamed that people come from all over the world to these parts and get drunk. We should be ashamed. Shame on Ireland. Shame on Ireland for promoting all of this immorality and filth and drunkenness. Shame on Ireland. Oh, let me ask you a question. Would you, would you, would you be pleased? Would you rejoice? Would you be happy if all the pubs in Ireland shut down? Would you be happy? Would you go a party? Would you be happy? Because Jesus Christ would be happy if all the pubs in Ireland shut down. Every single pub shuts down in Ireland. That would please the living God. Let that search your heart and see if you're right with God. Search your heart and see if you're right with God. Would you be happy if all the pubs in Ireland shut down? If you can say yes, then that means you're humbling yourself, you're drawing near to God, it means you might be desiring Him more than the things of this world. Yes? Do you love this world and all the things in this world more than God? Do you love your cigarette more than God? Anything. It could be anything. Do you love your own life more than you love God? Jesus said, whoever loves father or mother or son or daughter or even his own life more than me is not worthy to be my disciple. There's nothing better than being a follower of Jesus Christ than knowing the one who made the whole universe. Yes, these buildings are old. Ireland's old. We come from the United States, and, and there's, this is much older than the United States. But it's nothing to God. He cares about you. None of these buildings or this world means nothing to God. It's all going to perish. It's all going to burn. And we don't want you to burn in the lake of fire. God cares about your souls. When you die, your body's going to go in a coffin. Yes, but the real you is going to keep on living. This body is just a tent. This body is just temporary. And many of you are full of lust looking at women. You desire their bodies. You watch pornography. You're so consumed with the flesh. You're so consumed with the thing that's real. You don't look at women. You don't care for their souls. Many of you men here, you watch pornography and you lust after women. You don't love them. Love is not self-gratifying. Love is so sacrificing. And that's what Jesus Christ did for you. He sacrificed himself for you, sir. And what would it profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his own soul? And what can you give in exchange for your soul? What would you give in exchange for your soul? Let me ask you that. Think about it. What sin do you love so much that you're willing to go to eternal hell fire for all eternity because of that sin? Yes, in the, in, in the light of eternity, it's meaningless. In the light of eternity, drinking, getting drunk, and revelry. Yes, it's, it's meaningless. God has meaning and purpose for your life. God has meaning and purpose for your life. That's only found in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to earth for you. He is manifesting the flesh for you. But each one of you, each one of you, personally, he knows you by name. He knows each one of you by name. Oh, set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. Set your mind on things above. Forget all this. Go, it would be good for you, most of you to go home, pick up your Bible, and get on your face before God and say, Oh, God, show me the truth. I don't want to be deceived anymore. I don't want to be a slave to sin anymore. I don't want to be an addict to drugs anymore. I don't want to be a drunkard to booze anymore. I don't want to be a slave to sexual immorality anymore. I don't want to be a homosexual anymore. I don't want to be a fornicator anymore. I don't want to be unclean because the Bible says that nothing unclean went to the kingdom of God. Are you clean before God? 
Are you cleansed? There's only one cleansing flow. There is a fountain filled with blood. There's a fountain filled with blood. Drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Emmanuel, a name for Jesus. It means God with us. God came with us. He stepped onto this filthy earth. The perfect Son of God became a man and he dwelt among us. He's pure and he came to an impure world that hated him. Do you have hatred in your heart toward the one who loves you? You should be hating sin. You should be hating the devil. You should be hating the one who wants to kill, steal, and destroy. That's the one you should be hating. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. If you fear God, then you will hate evil. If you don't fear God, you won't hate evil. You'll continue in it. You'll continue in it. But there's a road that you're on and there's an end. You're on a broad path. Jesus said there's a broad path. A broad path. Just like this. And many are traveling. Now Jesus said this. Most people will end up under God's judgment not because God wills it. God isn't choosing you to go to hell and you to go to heaven. No, it's his choice that you all would be with him. It's his choice that you would be a princess. You'd be a daughter of the Lord. It's his choice that you would be a prince. A son of the king. What higher thing can you esteem? What higher thing can you can you look forward to than being a son or daughter of the king of kings? Why well, would you wouldn't want to stoop to be the president of the United States? If you could be a son of God, would you? He made everything. Why are you stooping to be this this thing, this stuff? Why are you why are you stooping? This is low. God is calling you to higher things. He's calling you to himself. Just as Jesus Christ went to that cross and died and was buried and rose again and was ascended to seat at the right hand of the Father, he desires to lift you up out of the miry clay and dirt and filth of this world. All of this, he'll lift you up out of it. And he'll set your feet upon a rock, and I can testify to that because Jesus Christ did that for me, and he'll do it for you. He will do it for you. But it's conditional. God's not going to save you arbitrarily and just grab you and throw you into heaven, that would be wicked. God is not a rapist. God loves you. A rapist decides when he wants something and he takes it. Does anyone here love rapists? No. Actually, God loves the rapist. But he hates the rapist too. The Bible says he hates all workers of iniquity. You realize that? God is holy and perfect. He can love you and hate you at the same time. If you're an enemy of God from your own choices, if you're a rebel against God, and you're doing your own thing, and you're living in sin, it's not only destructive to you, it's destructive to everyone around you. Your sin is not only affecting you, it's affecting everyone around you. Your choices have a ripple effect. Your choices have a ripple effect. When you choose to have sex outside of marriage, and to fornicate with someone who is... God designed, designed marriage between a man and a woman. When you choose to do that outside of marriage, that's someone else's wife. That's someone else's potential wife. That's adultery if you do that. If you're married, you wouldn't would want someone doing that with your, wife, with your wife, would you? Yeah, you would be grieved. Yeah, you would be broken if your wife went and had adultery. Right? Well, why are you doing that while you're not married? That could be someone else's way. God desires the highest good for us. And he designed marriage. He didn't design fornication. He didn't design sexual immorality. But all of us did. We designed that. And we've practiced it. And we've gotten good at it. I was practicing that most of my life. But praise the Lord, September 25th, 1994, I picked up my Bible and started reading it. The Bible says, he said, first the Lord gave me, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of that way is death. You know, there's a way that seems right to you right now. It seems right. God hasn't struck you dead yet. He hasn't judged you yet. So eat, drink, and party, right? Eat, drink, and party. Keep doing the same things you're doing. That's what the devil says. That's the lie of the devil. Don't believe the lies. Don't believe the devil's lie. Just because God hasn't judged you yet, don't think there's not a judgment day. Oh, truly the former times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands, he commands each one of you. He's commanding you to repent. Repentance is not a bad word. Repentance is your greatest opportunity.
opportunity. It's your greatest privilege that you can turn around. You can turn around, you can flee from the wrath to come. You can turn from your sin and you can cry out to God, He will hear you. He will hear you. But if you hold on to your sin, if you, if you keep iniquity in your heart sin and you regard it, okay, you hold on to it, it's precious to you. Your sin is precious to you. Then God will not even hear you. If you disregard God's law, then your prayers are an abomination to Him. Oh, many of you think you can go to the Catholic Church on Sunday, or maybe more than Sunday. You say your prayers, you kneel down, you stand up, you repeat after these things, these mantras that you say. And I know because I was a Catholic. I was a Catholic. I was baptized as a baby. I went through catechism. I took the, partook of this mass, this abomination every week, where they say the body of Jesus Christ is being crucified again. Transubstantiation is a lie from the devil. Christ died once for sins. Once. The just one for the unjust. The unjust. That you might be reconciled to God. That you might be a child of God. That you might be brought out of darkness into light. Oh, your sin is an offense to God. Sin is an offense to a holy God. It's a stench in his nostrils. Just like if someone put your head in a toilet full of feces, that would be a stench to you. That would be an abomination to you. That is what sin is to God. That's what all this drunk drinking, drunken revelry is to God. But you can be cleansed. You can be a sweet aroma to God. You can be cleansed and become a sweet smelling aroma to God. Yes, I don't want any of you to stand before God and cry out, Lord, Lord. Because Jesus said in Matthew 7, many are going to cry out, Lord, Lord, on that day. On that day, many are going to say, Oh, you said, whoever cries in the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's only a promise while you're living. That's not a promise for you when you die. When you die, you have no hope. And all the mercy is going to end. God will have no mercy for you on that day. But today is the day of mercy. This is the truth. Today is the day of mercy. Oh, and I don't want any of you to stand before God and hear him say, depart from me, I never knew you. God's going to give you what you want. You want to live apart from him? And you want to live in darkness? If you want to live in darkness and you want to live apart from him, then God's going to give you what you want. And don't rejoice in that. Don't say, yes, because that's going to be terror for you. Therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, he perceived you. Be reconciled to God. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Now he, can, he says, be reconciled to me. How has God offended you? How has God wronged you? No, well, you've wronged God. God hasn't wronged you. He's giving you grace every single day. Every single day. He's giving you taste buds that you can taste food. And you know you don't even give him thanks for it. You don't even give him thanks for the food you eat. But you enjoy the taste buds that he gave you. That's the grace of God. God's given each one of you grace. God is long suffering with you. Not knowing that any of you should perish, but that all of you should come to repentance. That means that you change your mind. Stop thinking you're something and say, I'm nothing. Stop thinking you're something when you're nothing. The Lord says you're nothing. Your life is but a vapor. Your life is only a vapor. Even if you live a hundred years, it's like that to God. And then eternity. Forever and ever, eternity. That's forever and ever. Oh, I know there's a hell, but think about this. I know there's a hell, because I know the one who's going to cast out and come out of the fire. I know him. I've met him. I don't just know about him, like some of you know about him. You just know about him in your intellect. But I know him, because I've surrendered my heart to him. And he's given me the Holy Spirit. But think about this. If there really is a hell, and there is, Okay? And you end up there because you reject those who tried to warn you. Because you rejected those who tried to warn you. At that point in the lake of fire, would you regret that decision? Would you regret? No, you say that now. Because you have pride. You have pride right now. But maybe the Lord will do some things in your life to humble you. 
trouble is one of God's servants. God sends trouble into your life when you have trouble in your life. Oh, don't shake your fist at God. God's trying to humble you. He might give you some trouble. He might humble you. You might end up in a sick bed. Yeah, you might end up a uh, quadriplegic. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying that God's going to do that to you. But, uh, but I know, I know a uh, woman of God, she's now under God, and she turned into a, into a lake and put her head into the stone, and she was a quadriplegic. And so, through that trial, she sought the Lord. Now she's in a wheelchair, she praises God for her wheelchair. She paints pictures with her teeth. Yeah, that is. She would never have experienced that without the Lord. God has beautiful things he wants to unveil to you. All the treasures that wisdom and love are in the dark are found in Jesus Christ. Don't trade your soul for these things. These are just cheap imitations, things alive. These are counterfeits. It's all a counterfeit substitute for what God desires for you. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you will reap. If you sow seeds for an orange tree, you're going to get orange and orange tree. Yeah. If you sow seeds for a grape, grape or a bone, you're going to get grapes. If you sow to the flesh and you sin, you will hold the world and you will have sins, grief, corruption. Jesus wants this man to be saved and delivered. Delivered from the demonic realm. Oh, if, if you're dabbling with drugs, the Bible calls it pharmakia. That's where we get our word pharmacy. If you do drugs, you open up doors for the demonic realm in your life to come in. You need to be heard. You need to take heed to the word of God. Because one act, one sin, one sin can be the last sin. One last trick. It could be your last trick. One last party. It could be the last party. Tonight could be the last time that you get to party. You know, Jesus said joy shall be in heaven over one sinner who repents. Joy shall be in heaven over just one sinner. That's how much God cares about you. There will be rejoicing and party and not drinking this. There will be a celebration in heaven over one sinner who repents. If you repent tonight, there will be a salvation in heaven. And God will be pleased with you. And you can live for the pleasure of God, not the pleasure of unrighteousness. You can know that you're right with Him. And you can have the peace of God. You don't have to be an enemy of God anymore. That's good news. You don't have to be an enemy of God. The Bible says the enemies of God are wicked works. Through wicked works. Through your own choices. God's not taking away your choices. Yes. You can say something. No? Okay. Oh, well, God pulled you about. God gave us ears. He gave us ears that we can listen. Okay? He gave us mouths that we can speak. Right? And we use them like that. And we take pleasure in them. You see? But God's not copying at that. God is grieved with that. That's perfect communication that comes from a heart. It comes from a heart. That heart is not right with God. That is a hard, hard prayer of darkness. But I know I used to speak like that. I used to speak like that until Jesus Christ gave me a new heart with new desires and he gave me a new language. Can I say something? He gave me a new language. Can I say something to you? Can you say something? I'm from Florida. I, I, Florida. I, I, okay. live in, I live in Florida. Okay. And the people in Florida are the most hypocritical. They're all Baptists. And they're the most hypocritical okay. people that I have ever lived with. Okay. Okay. And I moved here from Ireland seven years ago. And the He's Baptist talking about hypocrites. In, in Florida. Yes. In, in Florida. We're, we're from the United States. We're not from Florida. but I'm from Florida. There are, there are people that aren't hypocrites in Florida too. Yeah, yeah. But I live in Florida. And you're the most hypocritical people in the world. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, well, of us are you're completely hypocrites. If you don't like hypocrites, then don't go to hell. Well, because you're hell you're is... You're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. How do you know I'm a hypocrite? How can you come over here and preach to us? I live in Florida where you're from. First of all, what is a hypocrite? Does anyone know actually what a hypocrite is? Because people say that all the time. You're a hypocrite. 
But they don't even know me. How do you know I'm a hypocrite? I'm talking about the Florida people. No, you said I'm a hypocrite. Well, you're from Florida. No, I said I'm not from Florida. Well, I'm, I live I in said Florida. everyone from Florida is not a hypocrite. Would that be logical? All the hypocrites are not from Florida, right? No, no, I think there's hypocrites here. I'll tell you what. From, there's hypocrites in Ireland. What I'm saying is... Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Pe the people yeah. I know in Florida are complete hypocrites. You're all like, you're, you're, okay. fat, you're bashing the Bible on a Sunday and then you're all in fucking drinking. Like well, we don't do that. We live holy. No, but you... Monday through Sunday. Set apart for Jesus. And you don't know? I do know. Yeah. Are you, know. Judge? are you judge? I can judge you. Okay, so you can judge. I can well, judge you. But here's the thing. The Bible says we can not judge. But you better judge righteously. And Jackson Jesus has said that those who judge unrighteously All I say is Jacksonville are coming Florida. under God's judgment. Jacksonville Church Florida. yourself, Jacksonville lest Florida. you be judged by God. Church yourself, lest you be judged by God. You better yeah. judge yourself early. You need to judge yourself an angry, and I do. And I do. Because hard hearted person. That's because what you need to judge no, no, yourself. I, com I compared myself to the people in Jacksonville, Florida, and I'm a fucking saint. You got a filthy mouth. I'm a saint. I just judge that you have, you have a filthy mouth and you're not a saint. Because you know what a saint is? It's not the Catholic Church. You know the Catholic Church. Well, compared to the people I live with yeah. in Florida. A saint is someone who is wholly set apart for Jesus. Who, that, who gives his life completely for Jesus, who lays down his life, who dies to his own life, and Jack, says, I want Jesus. I don't want my life anymore. I'm I am crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, I'm a but Christ lives in me. And I'm I'm a, a I've heard I, I, I out of you. Hold on a second. Yeah, you I'm said, a, I am a saint. I'm a Baptist in Florida. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Well, that's you the way they live. That's you right. Tell, and there's you tell many them. Baptists that are hypocrites. Many Baptists are hypocrites, and but there's many Baptists that are not a hypocrite. You are. Many you are Baptists, Baptists are not hypocrites. Hey, yes, I have, I have brothers, I have brothers and sisters in the Lord that love Jesus. They go to a Baptist fellowship that are following Jesus. So you need to look to Jesus. I'm happy. You need to look to Jesus. Stop looking at the, not looking at other people. When, the, when someone's not following Jesus, you can say, okay, I, just, I see that they don't have food, they don't look like Jesus. But you, you need to look at yourself. You need to examine yourself and see if you're in the faith. You're not in the faith. You're not following Jesus. You don't look like Jesus. You don't talk like Jesus. You don't care about him. And a cross isn't going to help you around your neck. No, what I'm saying Crosses is... Crosses aren't going to help you around your neck. Florida people are... Jacksonville people are hypocrites. They're all Baptists and they go, they spill and they go drinking all week. Well, and you're telling me, you're, you're, tell, you're telling me, you're telling yeah, me how to live. I'm, I'm telling you there's real Christians. I'm telling you there are real Christians who love Jesus and obey him. The real Christians are going to come out and preach to you. Like this. Will you go in? They're going to come out and preach to you, you go back to and tell you how to be saved and care enough about your soul to warn you. A real Christian is going to do that. A real Christian is not going to go to church on Wednesday and Sunday and live his own life all the rest of the week. Every That's Baptist, not a real Christian. Every Baptist I know in America. There's only one kind of Christian, one who has been born again, who has the Holy Spirit living in them and is living holy. Because the Bible says without holiness no one will see the Lord. And you're on your way to destruction right now. No, you're an You're on your way to destruction. No, no. You're living like an animal. I object to you. You're living like an animal. No, no, hold on a second. God created you in his image, but you're an ape. You're an ape. You're an ape. Uh, I'm not an ape. You are an ape. I'm a man of God because no, I trust in Jesus. You're telling me I'm to live. I'm a man of God because I have trusted in Jesus. You're telling me I'm to live in America. But you could be a man of God too. But you have you think you could see. You think you could see, but you need to become blind. You need to become blind. You need to become poor. You need to humble yourself that you might see. Jesus spoke to the Pharisees. You're more like the Pharisees. You're more like the Pharisees that Jesus rebuked. Where to you and your state? Where to you and your state? All of those people in Florida, you were joking for Where to you and your state? Jesus said you need to become blind that you might see. But because you think you could see, your blindness remains, your sin remains. You're, you're holding on to your sin. Well, I, okay? know what, I know what you're like you in America. You need to let go of your sin. I know what you're like in America. I know what you're like in Florida. You, you know, know what I'm like? I know what all your people are like. Who believes that he knows what I'm like in America? Does anyone not believe him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Christians have blind faith. But you have blind faith because you just believed him. Looks like a Right? Hypocrites? 
He's not born again. He's not born again. Well, uh, I will say this. I will say this. Okay, I will, I will say. Are you going to interrupt her? Is that, is that rude? Uh, will anybody say that's rude? No. No? You don't think it's rude to interrupt people when they're having a conversation? Oh, so she won't even say it's rude. So I guess it's not rude to interrupt people when they're having a conversation. I was talking to her. I was talking to her. You can't even interrupt it. So, here's the thing. Here's the thing. No, no. You two are having a conversation. So, here's, 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 I want to answer your question. I do. Do you, would you, can I talk to you? Okay. So, so you said, how do I know he's been sinning his whole life? I know by the food coming out of his mouth, out of his heart, Okay, out of his heart, Jesus said, out of the heart, out of the, out of the heart proceeds the things that come out of your mouth. Okay, he has filthy things coming out of his mouth. He has hatred in his heart for certain people. I wash my teeth. Yes, I wash my teeth and I use. But there's still hatred. I wash my teeth. God says, if you have hatred in your heart, then you're a murderer in God's eyes. First shot. She says, I have hatred in my heart. You're talking now, about this you know, to him and I. How is that? So she again is judging me, saying that I have hatred in my heart. The only hatred that I have in my heart now, the only hatred that I have in my heart is a hatred for sin, and we need more of that kind of hatred in this world. We need hatred of sin in our own lives, okay? A hatred of sin in our own we need hatred of sin. Yes, because the Bible says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. But fears despise wisdom and destruction. That is the hatred of love. Not hatred towards people. Not hatred towards people. I, I love all of you. I'm compelled by the love of Christ to come here. I would not be here if I wasn't compelled by the love of Christ. We don't want you here, though. We don't want you here. Yeah, but God wants you. He wants you to come. I don't want you here. Yeah, they don't want him either. They don't want Jesus either. Hold on a second. Do you realize that? They don't want Jesus. They say crucify him. Just like you. Just like you right now. You would have been yelling out, crucify him. That's what you would have been yelling out. Crucify him. Crucify him. Yes, because he testified. He said, no. Why are you acting so amazed that I'm not that I'm not talking to you? Because no, no, you you don't get amazed. You wouldn't even, you wouldn't even say he's rude. You wouldn't even say he's rude. So hey, let me ask you. Let me ask this one time. One time. No, no, no. Okay. Hey, ask me first. Ask me first. Then I'll. Yeah. Why? I mean, what did I do to you? Well, I, I interrupted her so she cussed at me. Okay. It means something from your heart. It, it means something. I know. See, there you go. It comes from an angry heart. That's right. Go ahead. Okay. Your, your, first, your first question. Yes. Little baby being born, you were born once from your mother's womb. 
You had a physical birth, okay? When you were born, it's being born again. Jesus said, unless you are born again, you won't enter the kingdom of God. You need a spiritual birth. It's a beginning. It's a beginning with Jesus. It's a beginning. It's a start. Just like you have a physical birth, and you began in this world. Well, I'm answering about, about my, my new brother. Okay? He's my new, he's my brother. Yeah. I said, that, well, I'm answering. I'm answering. So he's born again. He's just starting to walk with the Lord. And he doesn't understand everything. But that's okay. You don't have to understand everything to come to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Oh, you have an angry heart. You have an angry heart. You're not going to be entertained on judgment. Hey, God's not going to entertain you anymore. He's being patient with you. He's being long selfish. Well, that was, I answered that one. Walk out, how can they be tough? What am I going to do? I got a nice So is he being rude yet? She said he's being rude. Okay, I agree. I agree. She has a conscience, and she says he's being rude. Absolutely, he's being rude. He's being disrespectful, and all of you have a conscience, and you know it's wrong. You know it's wrong. And he's in sin right now. Why wouldn't he talk to you, the other part? Why wouldn't he talk to you? Well, I, I, I can't answer that myself. But, but maybe, 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 maybe he doesn't want to, no, no, maybe, maybe he doesn't want to tell you the wrong thing. Maybe he cares, maybe he cares, maybe he cares about, not my faith, committed to Jesus. He committed his life to Jesus, but you don't have to understand everything. You don't have to understand. It's not mine. It's not mine. Because what? Jesus is the author. Jesus is the author. He's the author. I follow Jesus. Yeah, I follow Jesus. I surrender my life to him. But it's not mine. Each person has his own faith. Each person has his own faith. Each one of you is going to give an account stand by yourself before God, okay? Maybe he doesn't want to steer you the wrong way. Maybe he doesn't want to share something with you that wouldn't be accurate. Maybe he actually cares about you. Maybe he's wanting, maybe he's wanting to, maybe he's wanting to follow the Lord and spend more time in the Bible and spend more time with him and learn about him and spend more time in prayer. And maybe if you did that, then you would understand. Maybe if you did that, if you sought the Lord and you got born again, if you got born again, what does that mean? Okay, but that doesn't mean that you're born again. Have you been born? I know. I know that. I know that. But Jesus said, when you were confirmed, when you were baptized as a baby, that's what they teach. Baptized as a baby, being born again. That's false. That's a lie. Huh? So you. Ah, dude, they want to be Not a faith that is not. So. Yeah. So you love everybody here? You love everybody? Yeah. Do, you love, do you love everybody? Now, now the Bible says there is a very real hell. Just like this says there's a prison. Yeah. But just like there's a prison for lawbreakers. When you break man's law, then you stand before a judge and you're sentenced, you go to a prison, right? If you break God's law, then you're going to be accountable for that. You believe that? You lose the because hell is an eternal prison for lawbreakers. That's what you need to be aware. Can I say a prayer for you? Well, what are, you know what I want? What's your name? Shane. Shane. What? Yes, your mother. Okay. Well, what, what, what you, what you, what you can do is you can go personally. To the Lord. You can go personally to the Lord. He cares about you personally. Personally. Okay? He's intimately acquainted with you. He knows you. He knows how many hairs are on your head. He knows your broken heart. He knows how you're hurting inside. 
Yeah. And the board understands like that. He understands exactly. that. He wants to care for you. I would like to say one thing. He wants I to care like for you. Can I speak to him? Yes. I don't think we can all speak to everybody. Oh. But she may be gone, but the Lord isn't gone. The Lord's not, but, but the Lord is here. The Lord, if you draw near to him, if you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. Okay? You can draw near to the Lord, and he will strengthen you. He will be the God of all comfort. There's things of this world, there's circumstances and, and trials that are common to all of us. And God will be the comfort of your soul. He will comfort you. But don't receive the comfort of this world. The comfort of this world will comfort you in your sin. The comfort of this world will comfort you in your sin and say, Oh, you're okay. Just continue with me. Continue having fun. Don't listen to him. You're praying on people like that. I'm praying on people. So once again, he's making a wrong judgment. I'm praying on people like that. I'm praying on people like that. I'm pointing him to Jesus. I'm pointing him to Jesus. And you're praying on him. I'm not praying on him. I'm pointing him to the one who cares about his soul. I'm pointing him to the mother of his soul. I'm pointing him to the one who healed the blind, who raised the dead. Yes. That's the one I'm pointing him to. I don't have all power. I don't have all power. It's not until you come to him. Hey, John. Look at that guy in the blue, if you don't mind. You need to come to Jesus. Talk to him. He says, come to me, all of you who are heavy burdened, heavy burdened, heavy laden. He says, come to me, and I will give you rest. That's Jesus' famous Matthew 11. I will give you rest. Can heal the broken heart. Oh, but if you have a hard heart, the Bible says, do not harden your heart. Do not harden your heart. Today, if you hear the word of God, do not harden your heart in rebellion. Take heed to the word of God. Take heed to the word of God. You may not have this opportunity again. I know I never heard anybody. Nobody ever came to me. When I was living in sin and doing my own thing, no one ever came to me and offered me a way out. Nobody ever came to me and told me that I was wrong, that I was on the road to destruction. Nobody ever came to me. But someone's coming to you tonight. Don't despise the goodness of God. Don't despise the goodness of God. You need to consider the goodness and the severity of God. Yes, God is long-suffering. He's very patient. Can't you see that God is patient? God was patient with me. I'm silly. When I was doing my own thing and I was sinning against God because the Bible says that our sin is against God. Against Him, you're sinning. You made in the image of God, you're sinning against God. God gave you the law upon your heart. He gave you the conscience. You're sinning against the conscience. You're sinning against God. It's an offense to Him. It's an offense to a holy God. And you need to humble yourself and see the kindness of God. The kindness of God on the cross. The kindness of God on the cross. Will you not sober up? Will you not sober up and consider your soul? Sober up. Be sober-minded. Be vigilant over your own soul. You don't care about your own soul. God cares about you. He came 2,000 years ago, and he cared enough to live a perfect life in your place. He knows that not even, yes, he knows that you're living like animals. He knows that you believe you came from monkeys. Yeah, if you believe that, that's foolishness. The Bible says the fool says in his heart that there's no God. Foolishness, this is foolishness. Behold the cross around his neck. Yes, amen, amen. Yeah, you might as well throw that down <laughs> yes, you might as well throw that. That's just like a graven image, man. That's nothing. A cross around your right neck means nothing. Yes, just like the relics and all the idols in the Catholic Church mean nothing. They mean nothing. Well, I have I have brothers over here you can talk to, right? There's uh, there's one right here. Yep, there's one right there. Okay, I'm here to preach. Where can they get I'm here to preach? Where can they get a banana? I'm here to preach. Yes, you have one question. Okay. You turned water into wine, yes. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So what? So what? The Bible condemns getting drunk. Yeah, it does. Do not be drunk. Do not be drunk. 
Well, are you implying that he told people to get drunk? No, we're not drunk in the wedding. No, you're just putting God on trial. You're just putting God on trial. That's what sinners like to do. You want to put God on trial when you are on trial. You're on trial. You are the ones that are on trial, and God is not on trial. Stop putting God on trial. Hello. Hello. Are you a follower of Jesus? She's a pagan. You don't care anything about Jesus, do you? Wait, that's right, that's right. We're going to get a banana. But Patrick came to this country one time. He wasn't Catholic either. He came, he, he came. He was a druid? Oh, there's your revisionist history. It's all been revised and twisted because that's what the devil does. He twists the truth. He twists it all up and he feeds it to you. And you eat it down. You eat it down because it tickles your ears. And you want to hear things that tickle your ears. If I came here today and I said... Wow, you're, wow, that's very courageous. You're all clapping for a little child here, and you're influencing him. You're all influencing him. Do you understand that? Do you know what Jesus said? Where are your parents? Are your parents here? Are your parents here? No? Jesus said, better a millstone be hung around your neck and you're cast into the depths of the sea than to lead a little child away from him. Fuck you, you There you go. So, and you laugh because you give approval. You give approval to this. When Jesus said, Jesus said, you're, you may be accountable, young man. This is very scary. Jesus said you have to become like a little child. You know when you're a little child, you want a mocker of God? When you're a little child, you weren't having fornication. When you're a little child, you weren't laughing at evil things and saying, oh! When you're a little baby, you weren't doing that. You were innocent at one time. All of you were innocent at one time. You were all innocent and evil. You realize that? And Jesus said, unless you are converted, changed, and become like a little child, even younger than you, become like a little child because Different, at different ages, they understand more. When you come to an age of understanding what right and wrong is, and you know the good you should do and you don't do it, then it's sin. But when you're a little baby, you don't know your right, you don't know your right hand from your left. And you're innocent. And Jesus said you have to become like a little child. To enter the kingdom of God. I'm happy. You are happy. I'm happy. That's what gay means. Happy. We can, you could be gay, gay as long as you're happy, but you're not happy with sin, you're not happy with evil, but if you're happy because of the Lord Jesus and what he's done for you, and you're happy that he's giving you a new life, and you're happy to follow him, then that's good gay. You know, the homosexuals twisted that word. Satan twisted that word. Yes, gay didn't always mean homosexuality. Gay didn't. Are you going to disagree with that? Yeah, be unreasonable, baby. Be totally unreasonable. Absolutely illogical and unreasonable. Who here is going to say that homosexuality did not redefine the word gay? Did the word gay exist before homosexuality? Okay, you're silent. Maybe you agree. Maybe you agree that the word gay did come before homosexuality and it was pure. And that Christians were gay but not homosexual. Because the Bible says, oh, how happy is the man whose sins are forgiven. How happy is that man? So you could be happy. You could be happy today. Today you could be happy. But right now you have a false happiness. That's what Satan wants to do. He wants to lure you to sleep. Satan is a fisherman too. Yeah, Satan is fishing for you. He has lots of lures. Lots of things that you bite on. That's not the real thing. He's a counterfeiter. Stop listening to the devil. God has set before you life and death. Blessings and cursings. Choose life that you might live. God's hand is outstretched to you. Today, His hand is outstretched to you. 